What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So we have another member voted video today and we're looking at what in my opinion is the 10 best coconut fragrances. Period. End of story. Now this is my opinion. Are some of your favorites going to be left off of this? Probably. There's a real good chance because these are my favorite 10. But by all means at any given point in this video let me know down below what you feel are the best coconut fragrances. What in your opinion are the best? So we're going to jump into my 10. Stay tuned. So before we jump into what was already recorded, as you can see, I'm wearing a different outfit because I was took my shower, started editing, watching back, and it dawned on me, how in the world did I manage to forget Scent Journey Fragrances, Cocktails, and Catamarans? So I have a brand new bottle here. My wife stole my previous bottle. So I have a brand new one. Just started spraying it, and I mean, this absolutely belongs on here. This is a monstrous, the strongest coconut fragrance in this video, and we're starting the video off with The Beast from the southeast down in Florida. So this is fruits, this is melon, this is aquatics, and this is a strong pina colada accord. Creamy pina colada coconut smell, very dense. Like I said, a lot of ambroxan really helps this one push. This is a four sprayer for me, more than enough. There's a little bit of florals here, but I never really pick up any of the flowery notes. What I get is this bouquet of citrus and fruits. There's orange, there's apple, there's watermelon. You get all of that good stuff, but the center, the central focus of the scent profile is a coconut note and an actual pina colada accord that was created and added to the heart of this fragrance. You want one of the best experiences, especially if you want a beast performer, one of the best experiences when it comes to a coconut fragrance, you're going to want to check out Scent Journey Fragrances, Cocktails, and Catamarans. Now, let's get into the rest of the video. Starting with one that you might not see coming. This is Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue Sun. I've always had an appreciation for this fragrance. It literally smells like the original light blue DNA. Bright, fresh, citrus, salty and aquatic. It even has a little bit of that incense smoky nuance from the original with this sunscreen-esque type of coconut. This is beautiful. This is one of the best flankers they've ever put out in this line. I don't care what anybody says. I'm a fan of it. I strictly wear it outdoors when we're going to be by the beach or hang out poolside. So it's not all that often that I wear this one, but this is the one of the first fragrances that puts me in that mind state that kind of takes me there mentally. So it's pretty much my go-to for those situations. So needless to say, the bottle's going to last a long time for me, but you know, when it comes to coconut, I mean, it's Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue, one of my all-time favorite DNAs mixed with coconut. Check it out if you haven't. It's Light Blue Sun. We're coming in early with this one. The most popular, most well-known, at least I think so anyways, when it comes to coconut fragrances, Creed's Virgin Island Water. So I picked this up from my friend Hillary not that long ago. Glad to finally have a 50 ml bottle of it. This is a 2018 batch for those of you that are going to ask. Warm, boozy rum, nice lime, sugary. The florals don't really stand out much in this one, but it's a very warm coconut smell. It's a warm, sweet coconut, so there's a lot of booze in this particular batch. Uh, I did have a decant, which I still do have the decant, a 10 ml of this fragrance, so I wasn't in a rush to get a bottle, but the right deal passed at the right time, so now I have a bottle. Now I'm not going to run through this super quickly this partial which is about you know roughly 35 ml out of the 50 ml that's left is going to last me a long 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 time this is great stuff this is a staple in anyone's collection perfectly unisex it is quintessential summertime beach tropical vacation poster child for a great coconut fragrance i mean there's no two ways about it. the quality is great performance is actually really good on this bottle and on my decant which i don't know what batch that is i always get six to eight hours out of virgin island water every single spray I've ever put on my skin uh, is good stuff. This is absolutely worth trying. There's tons of clones out there of it. I get it. There's a bunch of affordable ways, but they don't really have the magic of the original. One of the greatest of all time is definitely Virgin Island Water. So when it comes to this fragrance, I felt it only right to feature both versions. We're talking about Jean-Paul Gaultier's Le Beau Eau de Toilette and Le Beau Le Parfum. So are they redundant? Of course they are. They're the same DNA, but they're both special in their own right. That's why they both deserve to be talked about, and they're both worth having, in my opinion. This is kind of 
eludes a lot of people. It sells out quickly when it hits discounters. It's hard to find. But here you have bright citrus, bergamot, a beautiful, beautiful coconut water type of smell with a sweet powdery tonka bean. It makes for this beautiful sweet tropical smell that's on the powdery side. Bright, fresh, super enjoyable, really good performer. Then you have the even sweeter, even more tropical. Le Parfum. This adds pineapple, which intensifies this juicy, fruity smell. There's a soapy floral tone from some iris, but the, the biggest addition to this that really stands out besides the pineapple is that green cypress note. Adds this beautiful green nuance in the heart of the fragrance, kind of a minty, fresh tone, which, don't get me wrong, this is sweeter because it's a higher oil concentration, so the tonka beans intensified. The juiciness of this sweet pineapple note intensifies the sweetness, but I think that cypress note is really what kind of rounds things out. This is a special fragrance. They're both awesome. Don't get me wrong. They were both worth mention here, but instead of having them take up two spots in this video, I felt it only right to talk about them at the same time. Again, this one's an even better performer than this one. Where I get six to eight hours of longevity out of this, this is eight to 10 solid, even in the 10 to 11 hour mark. And then they're both on the louder side, especially the Le Parfum. If you get an opportunity to try these, you really should because they're some of the best that Jean-Paul Gaultier's ever put out. And they just happen to be two of the best coconut fragrances, in my opinion. The Jean-Paul Gaultier Le Beau and Le Beau Le Parfum. At the recording of this, this is the last release to come out of the house of City Rhythm. I think it's superior to what it's a flanker of. This is City Rhythm. Miami Tropical Confession. So Tropical Seduction is the original, the highest seller from the house. This is a creamy, milky type of coconut. This is really, really enjoyable. It's got a sweetness to it. There's a rich, warm, fruity nuance at the top, but the star of the show here is this creamy coconut milk smell. It's a very milky, lactonic type of coconut, and it's not quite to die for, but delicious is a good word to throw in here when describing this scent profile. Doesn't offer much of a sunscreen smell because coconut traditionally kind of leans in that way. Like I said, most of the time here, it's more on the coconut milk side. Like I said, very, very creamy and sweet. There's a vanillic sweet tone as it dries as well with a creamy musk. Oh, just a beautiful fragrance. Excellent release by Niles in the House of City Rhythm monster performer as well uh, this is one that's worth trying this is immediately top three from the house in my opinion i think like i said prior i think it's better than what it's a flank or two don't be wrong miami tropical seduction is great better in the daytime than this is but just overall tropical confessions i think if you're going to pick one this would be the one again the city rhythm miami tropical confessions this next one is a brand new release from the House of Sphinx in collaboration with my buddy Neeb from the channel Aromatics. This is Sphinx Fragrances Coconut Daiquiri. So it's as the name would indicate. You get a lot of mouth-watering citrus. It's in the same vein of something like a Virgin Island Water. Uh, but here, like I said, it's more mouth-watering citrus and more about sweet florals. There's a hibiscus note that kind of stands out in the heart of this fragrance. There's not a ton of booze here. There's a rum note, but it's fleeting. It kind of comes and goes pretty quickly, never really dominates any with a hefty, boozy accord. <sighs> the recording of this, this was my scent of the day yesterday. This is beautiful stuff. Like I said, you get a lot of orange here. Uh, there's lime, there's orange, there's, I believe, lemon as well with the coconut on the top, but I get this orange coconut water, orange and coconut water type of smell. The top, like I said, very mouth-watering, bright and watery type of citrus, not a creamy, milky coconut. And then as it settles into the hibiscus and langalang, you get this sweet floral tone that is just, I think, my favorite part of the fragrance. It's a little sugary sweet. Uh, there's a creamy musk and vanilla combo that starts to come in, but the florals don't really go away. And the florals here don't offer any powderiness. They just offer this juicy, sweet feel that makes me a huge fan of this fragrance. It was a no-brainer to have this one included. Definitely get yourself a sample and try this one. This is one of the best releases for this year when it comes to the warmer weather. Definitely. This is Sphinx Fragrances and Aromatics collaboration called Coconut Daiquiri. Speaking of coconut and sweet florals like hibiscus, this one centers around that sweet floral type of smell as well. Here you don't have as much citrus, but the hibiscus definitely plays a strong role in Zimmer Parfum's Strange Paradise. This is a little bit more of a sunscreen type of coconut smell, more so than a coconut water or coconut milk. Like I said, more of the sunscreen cocoa butter type of feel. With a beautiful 
Very present, very prominent hibiscus note. Like I said, sticky sweet type of floral. Huge fan of this one. Musky and woodsy, but the woods here are more on the blonde wood, soft wood type of type of feel to the aroma. Uh, performance is in the average to slightly above average range. This is kind of falls in the six, seven hour range on my skin. This is absolutely worth trying. The quality on this is just super desirable. I, I don't know how this isn't more popular than it is. Big, big fan of this one. You can pick this one up uh, for a decent price. You can get 15% off with the code down below. I would suggest getting a sample. You can get a sample from the same site that's linked below and try this one out. It might be your next coconut love. It might be your, the fragrance you want to take on vacation with you. This is beautiful stuff. Just a fan of this one. Again, though has a dominant hibiscus note, I don't find it all that feminine, though I, some people would find it to lean feminine, but for me personally, as a guy that loves rose and iris, not that feminine to me. I think it's perfectly unisex. Everybody can enjoy this one. This is vacation in a bottle. You can make some summertime memories with this type of scent profile. It's very memorable in my opinion. Again, that's Zimmer Parfums. Strange paradise. So now we're walking down the road of intoxicated. They can't just all be fresh in daytime, right? Sometimes you gotta hit them with the heft, hit them with the warmth, hit them with an intoxicating aroma that's built to wow in the evenings. That's where Nishane Fan Your Flames comes into play. So there's something about this sweet, boozy, tobacco coconut combo that offers a little bit of this crystallized, almost marshmallow-like sweetness, the way the coconut comes across with an earthiness from this tobacco. This is super, super unique. There's tonka bean here. There's a little bit of powder. Like I said, powder, sweet, earthy. There's, there's a lot going on here. Very boozy as well. The booze kind of stands out and takes hold of this aroma. It kind of wraps its arms around these this earthy and sweet accords that you're going to get from it. Performance is stellar, as you would think, with a fragrance like this. Uh, like I said, they can't all be fresh in daytime fragrances. This is a stunner that I would say is better for the cooler weather. Great first impression fragrance. Uh, less is more. I wouldn't spray a lot with something like this because it can be overwhelming and strong. If so, if you're going to use it in that first impression type of situation, first dates, uh, you know, banquets, things like that, where you're trying to make a really good impression. You don't want to overwhelm, but you want to stand out a bit. Fragrances like this can kind of be the cherry on top or the icing on the cake for whatever you have going with your full presentation. This is, this is a stunner. This is a must try from the house. And one of the more unique coconut, and coconut's dominant in this one, one of the more unique coconut fragrances I've ever smelled. It's absolutely worth trying. It's Fan Your Flames from Nishan A. This next one is Summer Fun in a Bottle. This is the newest release from Zaharoff. This is Signature Coco Loco. This came with a variety of five different color caps, two different types of box tops. Just fun. It's a chopped up bowl of fruits. You have red clementine, pear, pineapple, as well as this like fleshy, meaty, thick type of coconut smell. Not really coconut water, not all that much of a sunscreen vibe, and not a milky type of coconut either because there's spices here, most notably this bright cardamom that really adds vibrance to the top of this fragrance. This is one of the best releases, if not the best release the Haroff has ever put out. It's been getting a ton of love from everybody that's been buying this for good reason. It's... It's a limited edition summertime release that made an immediate impact. It just came out and it's almost gone at the recording of this. It's probably going to make it maybe another week. 90% of the stock's been sold through. It's crazy just how awesome this fragrance actually is and how it came out. Performance is on the stronger side of things. You can make it cloying if you spray it too heavy. So be easy with this one. As it dries, it's dominated by a blonde cedar wood type of note that really kind of holds the backbone to this scent profile with a clean, creamy musk. There's a light floral tone, but it's never really all that flowery. Uh, and there's a nice warm, ambery feel as it settles in. Just vibrance, fresh. The benzoin kind of gives a little bit of effervescence as it dries down. It's just such a fun fragrance. And one of the best coconut fragrances I've ever smelled. Obviously, that's why it deserves a spot in this video. Saharoff Signature Coco Loco. There's an argument for this being my favorite coconut fragrance I've ever smelled. And I want to say I've said that on a few occasions because it's, it's top three for sure. You know, because this isn't ranked. It just happens to fall top three, I guess, the way the numbers shook out. But these aren't any in any particular order. But super underappreciated and underhyped is... Coco du Yemen from Le Fleurs du Golf. This is simple. It's coconut, 
it's amber, it's vanilla, but it's such a warm, realistic, authentic, like shaved coconut type of smell with a very thick vanilla. Warm, robust, sweet coconut. I mean, no two ways about it. It's as simplistic as the note breakdown would lead you to believe is as simplistic as it smells, but the quality, top tier, second to none. Performance lingers. It's dense. It's strong. It's an extrait de parfum, and it acts as such. It's not going to scream off of your skin, but it has such a thick cloud around you. This one will linger and hang out in the air from wherever you were standing for quite a bit long after you leave from that spot and walk away. This is a sillage monster in many ways. This one will really captivate. Uh, very unisex, but believe it or not, the warmth to this, I, I think it leans a little masculine for being a sweet coconut fragrance, but not really. A perfectly unisex with a light masculine tinge because there's kind of a an understated spicy tone in the backdrop that there's no note here to account for based on the note breakdown. But this is an experience worth having. Like I said, there's an argument for this being my favorite coconut fragrance I've ever smelled. It is absolutely stunning. Again, that's Le Fleurs du Golf, Coco du Yemen. Last but not least, I would be remiss if I didn't feature a lot of people's favorite gourmand coconut fragrance. And there's an argument for it being one of the best ever created when it comes to gourmands that feature a dominant, dominant coconut jasmine combo in the heart. We're talking about Curly Scents and Zaharoff of the Immortals. Now, I'm not the biggest gourmand guy. I gotta be in the mood for them. More cooler weather, I get in the mood for it. And look, this is warm, boozy, and spicy. But as it dries, especially on my skin, that coconut jasmine combo comes out quite a bit. Does give it a little bit of a feminine leaning feel for being a gourmand, but if you're the type that likes delicious fragrances, you're going to like this one. It's kind of a candied, a candied sweet coconut is kind of how you can look at it. Uh, cognac adds a little bit of boozy sweetness. There's a nice warm, robust, spicy tone to this one. Like I said, the white floral here adds the feminine feel, but again, I know a ton of guys that have been enjoying the hell out of this fragrance since it came out there. At the recording of this, there is still a very small amount of fragrances available. If you haven't tried this yet, you can get a sample in the link down below or grab a bottle. That is up to you, but an absolute stunner. If you're into gourmands, this is probably the most gourmand heavy feel of the coconut fragrances in this video. It's definitely worth checking out if you're into that type of thing. I promise you it's a stunner. That's Of the Immortals from Curly Scents and Zaharoff. Well, that's my 10, kind of 11, really, because I featured both LeBeaux in the same spot. But until next time, do me a real quick favor. Go ahead and like, comment, subscribe. I do appreciate all the feedback, and I love hearing from you guys. What in this video have you tried? What do you think about the ones that I featured? Again, some of your favorites are probably omitted. This is just my personal favorites. And uh, some of my favorites had to be left out because I had to really be honest with myself on if I was only putting 10, technically 11, because... Like I said, I had to put both the bows in here, but I didn't want to take up two spots with it. So we talked about them together. Uh, but there's a few really good ones that had to be left out because they're just not better than these. For me, anyways, for my taste. But again, let me know what you guys think with your favorite coconut fragrances down below. And until next time, I will say if you get your hands on any of these and you give them a spray now, pretty confident you'll thank me later. Have a good one, guys. Mm -hmm.